I'll show you what I know as we go forward. I'll try to get you more and more information, but this is a starting point. Once you get to a certain point with either a Japanese sword, Chinese sword, we'll do different style swords in these workouts together. But once you get to a certain level and you start to get really adept, you start to get good, you start to get better, you've invested your time in learning the very basics here online with me, go find somebody who's more experienced, who has more information. But we're gonna to talk today about footwork or how, not footwork so much as foot placement, just how to get your feet under your body in the right position for the Japanese sword. In this case, I'm using the Boken. You might have a katana, you can use the Boken, the katana. Maybe you have the Shinai, the Koreans call that the Jukdo, the, um, the bamboo sword. And these styles are gonna be different. Good morning. You're gonna have uh, the Kendo style, Do meaning the way of self-improvement, Kenning meaning sword, right? So Kinjutsu is, is the sword martial art. Kendo is a sword martial art, but it's different. It's more of the, um, it's like Judo is different than Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu is more straight fighting. Judo is more of a sport. It's more competitive. It's a way of self-improvement. So whether it's a Kendo, Kenjutsu, Yaido, drawing the sword, Maybe it's one of the styles for, yeah, and it, that's it. It might just be fun and neat for you. So whatever the style is, there's gonna, there are going to be differences, and they're going to be a little bit, they're going to be subtle differences, and they're going to be big differences. And it's going to be determined by what is your goal, what's the outcome that you desire. Is it for self-preservation? Are you fighting with your life two, three hundred years ago in feudal Japan? Or do you do kendo? You want to get into kendo the sport, and there's not a kendo school near you? This is just a starting point because this is my point. I want you to understand we're going to talk about footwork today. We're going to talk about how to hold the sword when you are simulating that you're carrying it to battle, to class, to practice. You're walking around with it. Where does your hand go? How is it placed? How to draw it and how to do some very, very basic strikes, maybe one strike, one block, and then practice that. The key to getting really good with especially Japanese style sword, the boken or the katana or kendo, uh, yeah, we're going to do uh, nunchucks today, Adrish. The key here is in repetition, 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 repetition. It's that daily practice. And it doesn't have to be hours. It can be five minutes a day of doing the same move, the same drawing motion, the same slicing motion, hand placement, hand position. And we're going to talk about posture. Posture is really important when it comes to the sword. And I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. So hopefully you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. I don't know if you see these here my kids were here yesterday put the targets all over the wall and they were running around shooting them with the nerf guns we just we don't i don't play nerf gun in the martial arts school but we have those i have those just for my own kids and i throw tennis balls right hand left hand you want to get really good at any martial art here's a pro tip throw the ball the right hand throw the ball with the left hand right hand left hand does wonders for your cross brain stuff good morning and you're going to learn faster first let's talk about how you carry the sword before where you draw it for practice. And again, this is the wooden boke, and this is a wooden practice sword. And always understand this. It's not a fake sword. It's not a toy sword. It's not a play sword. It's a wooden training sword. And that's important. It could even be foam, a foam training sword. The difference between a toy sword and a training sword is a toy is just for play. This is not for play. This is not for you to just play around, goof off. You can still do significant damage. And if you're a moose, Musashi fan, you know the end of the Musashi series, the last fight on Ganryu Island, and I'm going to butcher some Japanese names, so I apologize, it's not intentional, but at the end, he's fighting against his uh, rival, he tells, tries to tell the guy, look, you know, I, I matured past that, let's not fight because it's only going to end in death for one of us, he knows who it's going to, it's not going to be him, right, but, uh, and it ends that way, he kills him with the wooden sword, so uh, there's a link, the first link below, check that link, and you'll see this particular sword, and then you also see some other options, Japanese, Chinese swords. So you're gonna start you know, with your left hand, and it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, learn it with the right hand at the top of the sword and left hand at the bottom. So you're gonna learn, everybody's gonna learn it this way. You're going to have this. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna start doing podcasts again. I'm gonna go all in 2021, 2021, with your help, this channel is gonna explode. We're gonna skyrocket this. And it's not that I know so much, but I know a lot. And I realize with our interaction, there's a lot of value that I can provide for the martial arts community, for all of us. So there's people who really have a passion. Maybe you're stuck in quarantine, shut down or whatever. Or maybe you just have a passion for martial arts and there's not a martial arts school near you. 
and there's going to be a lot less after they open things back up. Half of them aren't going to make this shutdown. I'm, I'm uh, as my mentor Dan Pena says, I'm sucking the gas, the uh, fumes out of the exhaust on the car, trying to stay alive. That's why we do so many of these videos, and I appreciate you being here. But 2021, podcasts again, and I'm going to start interviewing and doing some, some uh, videos with other great martial artists who I've known for a long time and new ones that I want to meet. You're going to hold your left hand. If you have this broken, left hand is going to go on the sword with the blade side. And the way you can tell the blade, here's the bevel at the end. There's a slight curve, but the back of it is flat. The front of it is rounded. The rounded side is the blade. And the rounded side, when you carry your katana or you carry your boken, is going to face the sky. And there's one simple reason for that. Your hand draws with your fingers up, your hand draws the sword straight out. And, you, and my hand here is simulating the scabbard or the, the holder for the sword, right? So it has to come all the way, the tip has to come out of that scabbard. And I wish I had one to show you, but I don't. From here, and then when it's drawn, when you draw it out, the blade is now facing your opponent. So that's the first thing. We, we're we're going to talk about striking and blocking and moving the feet and all that. But first, you have to know how to get the sword out of the scabbard and how to carry it. When you first get one, you don't know, so you carry it the wrong way. That's not correct for this style sword. Blade facing the sky. Pretend like this is your scabbard. Pinch it, right? And you're going to take the tip and you're going to dip it into that hole in your hand, which again is representing the scabbard or the, the uh, case that it comes in, tip it up, and then it goes in. Now, in on a Japanese, on a katana, the way that that's sitting in there, there is a little lock right here at the uh, suba. And, and again, I'm going to butcher some of these Japanese. I'm going to do my best. You guys can correct me if you want to. But the hand guard protects your hand, right? And, and the, at the top, if you look at uh, katana, I don't have any with me right here, but there's a little notch there, and inside the scabbard, there's a little uh, notch there that keeps it from falling out. And you're still going to hold your thumb on the suba, on the, uh, the hand guard, but not directly in the middle. And some people do this, too. They hold it directly in the middle. But if you think about this as being a razor-sharp sword, and you go to draw that out, that just slice that can easily slice your th your your thumb there. So you're always going to hold it a little off set off of that. Now the other thing about it is when those swords go in there, there's a little locking mechanism. They turn like 45 or 15 to 45 degrees depending on the sword. Just turn a little bit, and that locks it in. When you draw your sword, your fingers are going to be facing the sky. This is my right hand. My palm comes in. Thumb is under the guard. My fingers are up, and my arm is in tight. It's like everything else I say with, like, fighting with the collie sticks, the nun nunchucks, or the, uh, um, the staff, the self-defense cane. You always want to fight behind your weapon. So from here, your hand is here, and there's actually, because it's in there a little bit, it's locked in there, it's turned this way toward your body. You make a slight turn as you draw it. From here... It comes straight, and I'm holding it up so you can see. But it, it would usually be here. And see how my elbow is up? It's not like this. That's lazy. That's lazy. That's the Marine in me. The Marine Corps comes out of me when I see somebody holding a weapon in a lazy way. So don't hold it in a lazy way. Get it up on your hip. And get your elbow back. Don't do the chicken wing. The elbow's back. The hand is here. You're going to bring your feet together. And I know you can't see them, but just put your feet together. Your toes are out a little bit like a duck. doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, when we talk about stance, and hold on, I'm going to give you some more perspective on my feet. You see all the mess back there. I just had a, a, an awesome workout with my virtual students. Your heels together. Your knees are slightly bent. Posture. I said posture is going to be extremely important. And one of the things about posture that people do is they duck their head to get their weapon around their head. You're going to keep your posture straight. We're going to go over that again in a second. But think about posture. Posture is so important. Posture is what helps you breathe well. It's what helps you feel confident, look strong, look healthy. So you're going to have your feet together, shoulders back and down, stomach up and in. Your fingers are up. 
and you're going to come in here. I'm going to show you closer in a minute. And you're going to pull straight forward. And look at this. My elbow is going out so that the tip of the sword comes out of my scabbard. And I have long, longer arms, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all. So don't make that an excuse. But here's what a lot of people will do. This is always wrong. Your sword, if, it, if it's a katana inside the scabbard, the sword can't do that. It, it has to come out. Think of that long tube. It has to come out of that long tube. And this, later, this part can strike in the face for self-defense. Maybe they're drawing their sword. You're going to block their draw. You get it there faster, and you slice them before they can slice you. Yaido. Yaido is one of my favorite martial arts. It's the art of drawing the sword. So you can practice just drawing the sword. So we're just practicing basic, basic, basic though. Real basic. I want you to get started and I want you to get really good at the very thinnest level first and then build on that. Like building a foundation for a massive, wide, deep tower, right? You're gonna have all the skill, but you gotta take your time with it. This weapon, I don't teach as much because I know a lot of people, they wanna get going fast easy to start with the bow that way, the bow staff, or the Joe. But with this, even the nunchucks are easier. Heels together, and it's not that it's easier, it just takes more discipline. Your palm is up, fingers facing the sky, push in, you're gonna pull a little bit, I said push before you pull a little bit, and then you're going to draw as you take a small step. Now, by small step, I mean about this much. My foot, is still under my body. I want your foot to stay under your body because you have, you have to have good foot placement, right? It's like if you were defending yourself in a firefight and you're in the military, you have to have good footing, but you don't have to have a fancy stance. They do, they used to have all kinds of fancy stances. Now it's about speed and power and get there quick and balance, get the feet under the body. So from here, I'm going to bend the knees a little, always bend the knees to prepare to move, and I'm gonna step with a small step and I'm gonna draw this, and you can either go straight across, and then you're gonna bring it up, and then down. Now, the second thing is the hand placement on the sword as you strike or block or move the sword through space and time. And your left hand, the last three fingers, is holding the weight of your boken or your katana. The last three fingers, the first finger and the thumb are not squeezing, they're relaxed. They're, they're not, they're not, they don't necessarily have to be open, but they're relaxed. From here, all of the slicing motion, all of the cutting motion, all of the spearing motion is being powered by that strong left-handed grip and that left arm. That left arm is pulling to create the slicing motion. The right hand is the driver. The right hand is the steering wheel. The right hand is the joystick. So the right hand, and, and I want you to see the right hand is also the last three fingers. First thumb and finger are more relaxed, but the last three fingers are holding the weight of the sword, squeezing and twisting together a little bit. You don't want to have relaxed wrists out this way. The wrists have to be in. So from here, like you're wringing out a towel, a wet washcloth, a rag, your hands are going to wrench toward each other. And that gets your, that, that makes this extremely strong. You're going to have extremely strong grip. That's why I, I love uh, Boken so much. Boken practice will build wicked strong power in your shoulders. You're going to get big rounded shoulders if you do five minutes a day, I promise. And your hands, you're going to be able to crush, uh, it's Christmas time around the world, right? It's, it's always it's the same time of year, but not everybody celebrates Christmas. I guess that's what I'm saying. Big tradition here in the States and probably Europe is uh, walnuts. That, you know, that, the, the nutcracker is sweet. That's a Christmas uh, ballet, the nutcracker. But, and, and the nutcracker is a soldier that, I don't need to tell you all that, but um, we, we break walnuts and eat walnuts at Christmas time. I don't know why. I'm sure there's some significance, but I don't care why. I like to try, I like to break them with my thumbs and my finger. Just because I had my martial arts instructor, he used to sit there and boom. And I think I said this yesterday in the class, he's not five feet tall. His hands were as big as mine though. And a lot of it came from this. And he could just 
crush those walnuts one after the next. I mean, just to, to a powder. If You can't eat them if it's a powder because you get the, the nuts in there, the, the shell. But he would just pop that thing open, throw them in his mouth and get another one. And I always looked at that. And then when he would go home for the night, because I lived in the school, I would sneak in his office and I'd take a walnut and I'd walk around the school thinking, how does he do that? And then I learned. And now I crush the walnuts with my hands. But this is a big part of it. All that to say, squeeze your hands together. Make sure they're nice and tight. Roll those wrists in, right? Don't have lazy wrists. Don't have relaxed wrists. Last three fingers on the bottom, last three fingers here. Second thing about the hand placement. See how there's distance between my hands? That creates the ability when I strike, I can push, extend, make that slicing motion, and stop. If you can't stop, if you create, if you put your hands together, you've created a pivot point and you will over rotate, putting too much stress on your wrist, but also dropping the tip of your sword in a way that leaves you open, right? I, I, I bring the sword down, it goes too far. I tried to stop it, you got out of the way, came back, cut my head off. For real, that's, that's this art, right? So bring your hands, make sure that there's distance. That's why this is so long. It's this long so that your hands can be apart. One hand's on the bottom, one hand's on the top. Now, if you don't have as big of a hand as me, or you're not as old, and your hands are not maybe half my size, you can bring the bottom hand up a little bit. You don't have to have them, they don't have to look like this. But you should still have, that's about one hand width between the two. You should still have some distance between there. So make sure you have that if you don't. So let's go back to the beginning. The rounded side is the blade. The flat side is the back of the blade. That's the hand guard. That's the tip. This is facing the sky. Your left hand is going to simulate, pretend that it's holding the scabbard, the holder for the, the case for the sword. You're gonna pull that to here and you're gonna dip the tip in and this is on your, you're gonna, the scabbard would be on your waist, tied to your body, and you're going to just push that in. Closing, and then your thumb is gonna come up, not directly in the center so you don't slice your thumb off, but a little offset on your suba, on your, um, your, your grip. Now, go back and watch it, Wilson. It, it's nothing earth shattering. We're just getting started. Very basics. I'm going to do a series of these. If you have a boken at home or a katana, or you want to get started with the Japanese sword. I'm going to do these so that you have a rudimentary, basic level understanding, and then you'll get you'll outgrow me. You will outgrow me when it comes to sword fast. If you do it, if you do it daily, if you do it daily, then go find a great in, either in person instructor if you can. There aren't a lot of good schools anymore. Ken schools, kendo schools, yaido schools. Um, Kobudo schools, like martial arts weapon schools. But there's some great information here. So maybe you'll be like Musashi. You'll be that masterless samurai, that ronin, uh, going from uh, video to video, picking up a piece here and there, and then training with, with earnestness. And, and you'll get so good, you'll create your own style. And who says you can't? Reddit, right? Quora, one of these forums. Don't listen to what other people say. All right, no one has to approve the dreams you have for yourself and your family. Remember that, no one. Palm up, this is my right hand. Body is gonna be tight. You don't have to be ridiculously tight. That's ridiculous right there. But, but remember, you wanna be small. You wanna be a small target. You wanna be hard to hit, hard to slice up with their sword. You're going to have your feet together. Turn them out just a little bit. You have a little bit better balance. Bend your knees. Take a small step, shift your weight, shift your weight forward, not top heavy. Think of leading with your belly button, right? Shift, and you're gonna draw straight, and you can either come straight forward, or I like you to practice it this way, so you can practice that horizontal strike. So you're here, make sure your elbow's not dropped, bend your knees, coming straight forward, out, bring it up, make sure your left hand is on it, back to here, and down with the strike. Now when you come down, at the end of the strike, you're gonna push 
a little with the right hand and pull. You're pulling. It's really your, your, your left hand that's doing all the work, right? So from here, it's a strike. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do sets of ten from here. And then I want you to simulate putting it back, the back of the blade on your hand. Pull, pull, pull. Dip the tip in. So after you did your last one, you're going to bring it back to your scabbard. You're pretending it's here. Or if you have a katana, do it for real. Bring it back here. Pull, dip, and then step back into your starting position. This is where the discipline comes in. Now you'll see sometimes when people finish their last strike, they hit their hand, they hit the hilt, sometimes they hit the blade. Not like this, because you cut your fingers off. They hit the blade or they shake the blade. And that's all to simulate getting the blood off of your sword, right? Before you stick it back in. So if you want to add that fancy move and show, show that, you know, and then someone's like, why do, you, why do you hit your hand? Or why do you hit the blade? Or why do you hit the hilt? Or why do you shake it like that? You know, and they do a combination and you're like, wow, it takes the blood off, right? And it won't be for real, but you'll be, but it would have been 150, 200 years ago in Japan, right? After a duel or a contest or a, uh, a battle or something like that. Anyway, we'll start over. So from here, make sure it's not down, pull it up. The rounded side is the blade that faces the sky. From here, bow, you can bow if you want. This is a traditional way to bow. Bend the knees a little, bring this hand over, fingers up, and this will take some flexibility in your wrist. From here, drawing straight like this. Now, do you always draw it straight into their face? That's a good idea for self-defense because that uh, interrupts their line of sight. You can pop them in the face. No, you're not always gonna draw that way. Maybe you draw it here. Sometimes you'll see they draw it to the side or they draw it this way and out. It all depends on what the situation is, just like everything else is self-defense. But I want you to practice from here, practice straight out first, either here or here. Maybe they're drawing their sword and you're gonna step in and stop them. You literally, you lock their arm and then you use that as a pivot point and you come through and Yaido's the art of the draw, you know, one slice. The, the goal is to stop them, draw faster, draw better, draw smarter, and end the fight with that first, that first draw. It's a whole martial art. You look it up, I-A-I-D-O, Yaido, I-A-I-D-O. You'll see some impressive stuff. Bend the knee, turn, almost like you're uh, uh, rubbing up your motorcycle. Just a slight amount, just a little bit to unlock the sword from the scabbard. Step in with your right, leaning, with, or leading, not leaning. Leading and not leaning, not leaning. Don't ever lead with your head. A lot of people do when they're unexperienced or inexperienced in martial arts, they lead with their face. <laughs> I, I, it's a joke in martial arts world. We say, don't block the punch with your face. Don't block the kick with your face. And in this case, don't try to stop the sword with your head, right? So you're going to bend a little, lead, with your belly button, draw straight, come across with a slicing motion, come back here. Your right hand is always gonna be higher than your left hand, meaning that when you go back, if you pull that back, and you'll see that in kendo, you see a lot of kendo schools coming back and down, and there's a reason for that, and it's not wrong, it's just different. Since Amit, Good to see you this morning. We're just going over basic, basic, basic level. Please, if anybody has anything to add, a lot of you guys will know more than I do on a lot of things, and I'll be the first to say, throw it in there. Throw it in the comment section, put it below, add to the conversation. This is a global, global virtual dojo. We're all in this together. We're not in the COVID together because we're all in different situations, but we're all in this global dojo together, training at home because we're all shut down these days. Anyway, from here, bend, bring it across. There's that slight turn, step, draw, 
and one foot's in front of the other. Remember, don't lean. Lower. Lead, right? And your feet, you're on the balls of the feet. You'll see Kendo has the heel up. You don't have to have the heel up, but don't have your weight on your heels. It's like boxing or anything else. If you put someone on their heels, the next thing is they're on their bum. And then if it's MMA, you're ground and pound. There's, it's a saying, you know, he put me on my uh, back foot. Or he put me on my heels, meaning you get locked back. And then you're, you're trouble, you're, you're done. So it's like an anchor. You don't want to be on your heels, you're slow. You're locked in place. Stay on the balls of the feet. Once again, palm up, bow if you need to. Step, draw, slicing. And remember, the left hand is pulling the sword. It's controlling the weight. The right hand is, yes, of course. And this is the point. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Sensei Emmett, because people get intimidated, especially in, in katana or um, kendo or kenjitsu or yaido, because it's so complex. And it's not complex in the moves so much as it's uh, the, the simplicity is... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, don't hit the blade. <laughs> Thank you. Good point. Um, if, you, if you're using a live blade, now a live blade is a term meaning that that is metal and it's sharp. Now they make metal um, aluminum for demonstration and it's rounded and it is not sharp. You can't sharpen aluminum. But if you, if you, if you have a blade, and it, it's important, don't, don't, there are a lot of uh, um, garbage blades, a lot of garbage katanas where it's made, and it'll say 440 steel and all kinds of fancy stuff on it, but you go to do a fast motion, a blocking motion or a twisting motion, and I've seen them, I've had them break in my hand and fold over, and it's still super sharp. So live meaning sharp. So if you do have the sharp blade, be very careful. Always start with it. If you have the option, get a Boken, less expensive, and there's a lot more you can do with it. And then once you get really good, you can get into cutting, you know, where you cut the, the straw and that kind of stuff, or whatever. Yeah, uh, soon, this week, we're, we're nunchucks collie today. So we bow, step, and uh, what I was saying since Emmett is that because there's so much complexity, yeah, it, it takes years and years and years to be, go, go from a beginner to a, to a intermediate. Years, right? Unless you're very earnest and you practice really hard and you have some lifetime experience, which we don't because we don't live in feudal Japan. We're not literally slicing each other up. Thank God, right? Um, but uh, don't let the complexity, don't let that stop you from starting. Because if it is complex, then the best thing to do is start now. <laughs> Take that first step now. Learn how to carry it. Learn what's the front and the back. But don't, but don't spend all your time studying the terms, Suba, and the, all the Japanese names. And don't, don't become a, um, you know, a practiced theorist. Don't be, don't be uh, somebody who knows all the history of something and has never picked one up. Or don't be somebody who knows all the correct ways you're supposed to hold it, but you never held it. That's my point. So don't let it intimidate you so much that you don't get a boken and get started if you don't have a school near you or if they're shut down for the next 10 years. God forbid, right? I'm, I'm mostly joking. Remember, squeeze the hands together, the last three fingers on each hand, holding the weight of the sword and your first strike coming from here, straight forward. Think about pulling with the left hand, pulling, pulling, and through your center line, through the center, through the center of the right hand is the guide, squeezing together. And at the end, add the cut. From here, push, three, four, five. And your right foot, I just smacked myself in the back, going back to the kendo days. The right foot is in front of the left, always keeping the right hand above the left. And then if you want, you can switch feet. And that's sacrilege to some styles. But um, they do it in Aikido. Aikido is very common to do both. That's why I said there's going to be so much, there's going to be nuanced differences and there's going to be massive differences. 
depending on if you're doing like Aikido Suburi with the Boken or, yeah, exactly. And like I said, your shoulders can be so strong, your arms, your forearms. Uh, no, I, I was blessed. As a young person, I was frustrated because even though I was highly trained, I never did it um, for a million reasons, right? Someone else's number just kept getting picked before mine. So I've never been... I've been in, on active duty in, during wartime, but I never, I never had battles, right? So from here, and when, when, especially if you were a Marine, you're like, oh man, that, that was what I was trained for. But then you, you, you see a lot of your friends, your buddies, some lose their lives, uh, a lot of them are injured, a lot of them have uh, a lot of emotional trauma. And then you realize, God protected me from that. Maybe it wasn't my, my responsibility to do that. So I'll say not yet, because who knows what the future holds, right? So from here, squeezing the hands, roll those wrists in, practice this. This is all you need to know. The first day you pick up your sword, practice, hold it the correct way, blade side up. Your thumb is offset a little bit. You're going to turn it to unlock it. You're going to draw straight, bring it above the head. It's back behind you a little bit and down, remember to add the slice. So from here, and then at the end, bring it back into your starting position or your protected position where it's in front of you. Think of a triangle, the tip of the blade, your nose, your wrists, and fight behind that cone or that triangle for protection. So from here, the wrists in, And practice that. And that's all you need to practice. Um, do sets of 10 and do them. Do no less than five sets. After 10, practice putting it back through here. Uh, it is 11.10. 10 minutes after 11 a.m. or 1100 for those of you international military types. Put it back in. Comes on the, don't ever drop the hand. Come back to this position. Finish with the bow. And do it again. So from here, step, draw, practice, two, three, four, five. And it's been a while. You, you saw me do this and this. Don't do it that way. Always do strikes, two, always keep every strike has to be separate. That's where slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The speeding up part comes in the shrinking of the transition between this strike and this strike, not by going not by slicing faster, not by doing some weird shaking your sword thing. It has to be strike, strike, strike. And it's been a little while since I've practiced this a lot. Um, yeah, the or, is that the one you're talking about? The one that Musashi goes to Ganryu Island and uh, this is the last battle in the last fight. No, the Shinai, Shinai is the, uh, the um, bamboo, the split bamboo. And then it's got the tip made out of the, the shinai is for the kendo where they wear all the armor. The Koreans call it a jupto. Shinai is the bamboo sword made out of multiple pieces. And then it has leather at the tip, leather here. It's got string, usually yellow. And then it's got leather here where the suburi is. The suburi has a wrist guard. And then the handle is leather. But inside are multiple pieces. Um, you know, those, those famous, like, what was that movie, the Japanese, where the, the uh, Japanese had occupied China, propaganda film, um, something sun, and uh, there was a, the mean Japanese soldier who was smashing people with his shinai. I think they also did that. Uh, yes, I think so. They also did that in uh, Bridge Too Far, or River Choir, one of those movies. Anyway, that's the shinai. That's the bamboo uh, practice. And then in, in uh, like Game of Death or whatever, in the Jackie Chan movies, and then all the remakes, not Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, the, um, the bad guy Japanese are always smashing people with, with the bamboo swords, the shinai. All right, but there's, there's a, um, there's a boken that's like the wooden oar. It's supposed to be an oar. I left mine in Ohio, like everything else. And it is, it's very heavy. And my favorite boken is white oak. And it's made by the same people that make my favorite Joe, which is in Ohio, the boken's in Ohio. I brought the bow, so we'll, we'll practice in the very next session. I'm going to show you a block and a strike.
And then we're going to work up to how to start to put them together, how to practice blocking or defending yourself, and then how else you can use the sword for self-defense because if you don't have the sword, you're not going to walk around the streets carrying a sword. Okay, I know what you mean. Um, I think you're not going to walk around with a sword, but you can pick up a tree branch. You can pick up a piece of pipe. You can have your cane. You can use a lot of these techniques. Well, not that one, but use a lot of techniques with your cane. And, you know, maybe you want to uh, carry a cane sword, which is an illegal weapon for most places, but just for fun. All right. Thank you so much. Please leave your comments. Like I said, you guys are going to know so much more than I, especially those martial artists who spend a lot more time with the, um, the kin or the, the boken or you know, whether it's Aikido or maybe the uh, Kobudo or your school has a very robust Kinjitsu program. And then the actual sword fighters, those guys are going to be light years ahead of the Aikido guys. No offense, Aikido guys. And the Kendo guys, the Kendo guys, that's a sport. It's an awesome sport. It's a fun sport. It's a hard sport. It hurts <laughs> sometimes when that sword wraps around and smacks you in the back of the neck or the shoulder. But um, cool. Yeah, Najinata. I, I love the Najinata. That's, that's the uh, uh, long staff with the, the blade on the end. The, and, those, and those weapons are like those saw the most use. In, in battle after battle after battle in the most recent past where some of the other weapons that we use or things like the nunchuck, that's a movie weapon. I mean, let's be honest, right? That's a movie. And maybe somebody has used it. I've been in a fight where someone had a pair. That's how we got our first pair. My brother took it away and then it was mine or ours. And then we reverse engineered and made it. All right. So thank you guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Hopefully I'll see you before Christmas. If not, stay safe and we'll be back in just a little bit. Please leave your comments below. Like